good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, by way of background, um, my family spent four generations of, uh, as gold miners in Australia. Um, but now we are developing a lithium project. Um, we'll go through um, the background of the market. We'll have a look at our project and some of our other assets. Hands up who's got a phone. There's a 99% chance you've got lithium in your phone. Last year, if you have a look at the, the Apple, it had about 25 cents worth of lithium in your phone. The price has doubled uh, in China. So you've got 50 cents worth of lithium in your phone and the phone's worth $1,000. Does it matter if the price goes to a dollar or two dollars? Because without the lithium, you've got no battery. There's a disclaimer, we're actually listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. So what is Neometals? Uh, formerly we were a gold miner, we got out of uh, gold mining. Uh, my father believes that the gold price has been manipulated since the early 1980s by the US. Um, our uh, goal, like most uh, family officers or fathers, is to try to generate multiple long-term cash flow streams that we can share with our shareholders and our stakeholders. We've got globally significant resources of lithium and titanium. We've got good human and financial capital. We have about $66, $67 million worth of cash on the balance sheet. We attract uh, strong business partners to commercialise our deposits and we revert back to a minority stake. Uh, and we attract them normally in a combination of the, uh, the actual quality of the deposits because we have been around for four generations. Uh, and we have a big focused uh, a big focus on um, research and development so that we can bring attractive technologies that give operating and capital cost advantages. Oh, wrong way. Um, we've recently announced a two cent unfranked dividend um, that we're paying in early April and we're starting an on-market buyback. The share price performance uh, has sort of mirrored the interest in lithium, which, is, which has been pleasing. We have a market cap of uh, 170, 180 million Australian dollars. Uh, the biggest shareholders in the business are, are my family uh, and our friends. So each of our businesses we have in discrete silos so that one can't affect the other. The failure of the gold business hasn't affected the rest of the investment portfolio. We're developing the world's largest hard rock lithium concentrator with China's biggest lithium producer and Australia's largest processor of minerals. Um, we have been selling, progressively selling down equity there, so we've managed so far to, to um, sell down from 70% to 27% and pocket a little under $70 million. Um, we'll sell down another chunk. So in essence, we're going from 70% to 14%, pocketing 100 million uh, Australian dollars and uh, which is a, on a, a sort of backward looking PE of about eight and a half, which is pretty good for an undeveloped piece of dirt. Um, we have the world's second highest grade hard rock titanium deposit. That we are putting through a pre-feasibility and then moving that through to definitive feasibility study. Uh, and we also have a lithium downstream uh, business that we are looking to develop with our partners. In terms of a board and management structure, uh, we try to do this uh, pretty lean. It's got down here, we've got a lean management team that's presumably by number and not, and not size. Um, we have uh, three on the board, we have three senior management and we have three other people in the office. So there's six of us. Uh, we get a lot done and we've recently appointed a senior lithium uh, industry executive, Mike Tamlin, as the chief operating officer. So we believe that, uh, albeit we do still have a very soft spot for gold, uh, that lithium and titanium are the right elements for us to be in at the moment. So lithium demand is growing from 200,000 tonnes uh, of LCE in 2015 to 500,000 tonnes. There's not a commodity in the world with those demand fundamentals. It's growing at a cumulative rate of in excess of 15%. And that's primarily driven by the lithium battery market. Um, you know, the cars are the sizzle, the renewable energy storage is the stake. And, and really that's just getting down to the size of these batteries. Originally they were in your cameras, then they're in your phones, uh, the format's getting bigger, your laptops, motorbikes, cars, buses, uh, and now you, know, you can store renewable energy from solar and renewables. 
Now, what's going to drive the big demand, and we're um, basically sitting down here at about 50 gigawatts of battery production in the world. Um, at the start of 2015, the price for batteries, if you rang up Bosch or LG or Samsung, was about 800 bucks per kilowatt hour of storage. The guys at Tesla in March, uh, May last year, put out the power uh, wall for your house and the power pack and dropped it down to $250 a kilowatt hour. So we, we've brought forward where the pricing five years and the demand has gone through uh, the roof. In terms of uh, judging it by economic reality, uh, it was the most successful product launch in the history of man. It took Apple 12 months to get US $1 billion worth of sale. It took Viagra three quarters. It took Tesla two weeks to take their commitments for its first billion in sales. The, the lithium world um, is evenly split down the international date line. To the left, you've got hard rock supply predominantly from Australia sending it up to China, converting into chemicals. Chileans and Argentini or Argentines uh, take it out of a dirty water up in the Andes. Um, they are down the lower part of the cost curve, but it typically takes them four or five years to build new capacity to respond to supply. It takes the Chinese nine months to build a new plant, and it takes the Australians about a year to build a new mine. So this splitting of, of the world into rock and, uh, and, and the brine source and this inability for the lowest uh, half uh, of the cost curve to respond has caused a bifurcation in the market. So the Chinese uh, are getting and paying uh, twice the price that the uh, South Americans are getting. And you know what's going to happen in the long term? Well, you know the Chinese prices will come down over the next couple of years, and the prices for brines will probably go to ten thousand at the next price reset. What does that mean for me uh, as a miner? Well, our prices get set by what the Chinese converters can afford to pay. Now, in the current market price environment, they can afford to pay a boatload. Uh, so just before Chinese New Year, the guys at Albemarle spoiled the celebration by raising the price of spodumene $100 US uh, a tonne to 540 and I believe the boys um, from Mount Catlin were actually successful in getting another $60 out of them. Um, so this price, uh, you know, it can be maintained for a couple of years. It doesn't really worry us so much because we've taken the advantage to actually sell down out of a high cost mine uh, before it comes into production. And is it going to get replaced? All of these technologies, people are always worried about someone coming and cutting your lunch. Um, you know, the lithium batteries were invented in the 70s. Sony started making them in the 90s. We're now at the point um, where we're starting to get mass adoption of them. Um, that's the lithium iron. Oop. That's lithium iron there. Um, the lithium sulfur batteries and the lithium metal batteries are at least five to ten years away. The good news is they use increasingly uh, more amounts of lithium. So we get down to the Mount Marion Lithium Project, which is located uh, 40 kilometres from my hometown. Um, currently we own 27%. Ganfeng, which is China's biggest lithium producers, at 43.1 mineral resources um, at 30%. So what we've done, apart from taking a lot of the risk out and getting paid a good PE on the way in, is we've de-risked the business significantly. We have Australia's largest contract processor of minerals building the world's largest hard rock lithium concentrator on a build own operate basis with no equity up front from us. We have a contractually set number of days to uh, build the mine, uh, a contractually set number of days to commission the mine. Um, they guarantee minimum production levels uh, of the mine. So, you know, no one's really ever been able to achieve that in any mining operation. Um, we were lucky that Western Mining, which was taken over by BHP, had the project for 40 years, but chemical uh, lithium batteries never existed then, so they let the project go in 1996. Um, we have fixed rate mining and processing costs. Uh, everything else is open book plus a, plus, a, plus a margin, so no one's ever had so much certainty in their costs. Um, everyone can be certain of incurring costs. It's the revenue side that normally worries people. So, you know, we've managed to get 68 million bucks out of Ganfeng Lithium at the moment. Um, 
we've signed a life of mine take or pay offtake uh, at market, no discount, with a floor price based on actual delivered cost into China, plus a fixed margin that guarantees we'll never lose money. A $20 million revolving letter of credit for every shipment uh, with 100% uh, as we exchange the bills of lading. Um, and most importantly, after three years of producing exclusively to Ganfeng, we can take back the majority share of production. Um, we've granted a couple of calls and puts, but given that the price went up, uh, for the commodity $100 uh, per tonne, we will drop down to just below 14% and pick up nearly $20 million. So this is a, a fly through uh, of the mine. You get to have a bit of a look uh, at a piece of Australia. So Mount Marion is uh, about 600 kilometres from Perth, which is the capital of Western Australia. Uh, 40 kilometres from the gold mining capital of Australia, which is Kalgoorlie. So we've got an excellent uh, mining population uh, about 40 kilometres away. We've got high voltage power to site, granted leases. So the, the Western mining guys that had it for sort of 40 years, they left us with a couple of million tonnes of resources and we've progressively just drilled those out. The lithium's in a pegmatite, which is a white material. The hanging wall and the foot wall are black basalts. So um, it's very easily to distinguish the ore. Um, it's nice and thick at surface. The life of mine strip ratio is about 2.7 to 1. So our entire mining fleet is one excavator and five trucks. We bought the old gold mine next door, which uh, I worked at straight out of school when I was 18. Uh, so we're building the plant adjacent to this uh, old historic pit so that we can use the old pit as a life of mine tailing storage and avoid building a dam. The processing is relatively simple. It's three stages of crushing, followed by dense media separation uh, and flotation to produce uh, a chemical grade concentrate uh, of 6% and one of uh, a subgrade concentrate of 4% that we will sell through to Gan Feng. Um, we've got excellent existing uh, facilities there. We're adjacent to a, to a bitumen road. Um, you know, look. It's open-ended. We've got uh, a big drilling program on at the moment so that we can consider a, dis uh, a decision to double production later in the year. We always knew that the Chinese uh, would come knocking on the door and wanting an increase of production. So we've got 5 million tonnes capacity in the crushing circuit and our current installed capacity in the beneficiation circuit is 2 million tonnes. The Chinese came out in January to, to monitor how our production was going. They were so impressed that they exercised their options early to increase uh, and then kindly requested that we double production as soon as we can. Uh, it's just a matter of then trucking that down a bitumen highway to a government-owned port. Uh, initially we'll go out of Kwinana. Uh, Esperance is our preferred long-term solution but the, uh, the outloader needs to be repaired. Uh, it's a beautiful port. You can uh, get very big vessels in there. That was a, uh, a photo of, from site in early February. I'm pleased to say it's worked out a lot better. And, and so this is the rub for potential investors. You know, over the coming uh, quarter, um, we have a number of milestones. We're starting mining this week. We're starting crushing in April. We're going to start beneficiating in May and we'll get the first shipment out. If it's not before uh, 30 June, it'll certainly be in July. So, you know, they are major de-risking and re-rating events. Um, we have, we're about 250 holes into a 580 hole drilling program. So we'll have a number of sets of um, drill results out, a new resource in June and a new reserve in July. So we're selling out of the mine uh, and we're investing more of our attention into turning this into a battery material and this is why this is why the Chinese are really uh, keen for it. Our partner, Ganfeng, and their competitor, Tianji, they're multi-billion dollar listed companies in, on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. They trade on PEs of 190 to 230 times earnings. Uh, I'm not sure that we're going to ever be able to get to list on, on the Shenzhen Exchange, uh, but they are, it is a very attractive business. Uh, we are long-term miners, we are not chemical uh, makers, but we do have plenty of cash and we've got, uh, we're able to take our share of offtake 
in a couple of years' time. Um, so what we did is we developed a process where we've adapted the chloralkali. So instead of electrolyzing uh, a sodium chloride, we're making a lithium chloride and electrolyzing it. So um, our purification is where our granted IP uh, is in. Electrolysis has been around for 110 years. The Swiss have got Krebs here as one of the local manufacturers of chloralkali. There's no IP in the chloralkali back end. Um, but what it does is it enables us as what in the mine was a, a high cost producer to come down into the bottom quartile. Um, and I say the bottom quartile, we can compete with the brine boys and the brine boys are small in lithium hydroxide which is the, the material that goes into the Tesla battery and the Porsche battery and stuff like that. Uh, China is 75% of world production. So you really only have to compete with the Chinese. So we can do that on an OPEX basis. Um, and we can do it on a capex basis because it's a very conventional uh, process, chloralkali, and relatively cheap. And there's a number of suppliers worldwide. When you have a look at the, the pre-feasibility study and you see an internal rate of return of 94%, you can understand why the Chinese break their neck to get into the business. Uh, but you can't play in the business unless you've got your own source of supply. We've got the German engineers, M&W, doing a definitive feasibility study that will be finished 30 June. The IRR will be more than 100% when the results come out. Our commercialisation plan is to complete the definitive feasibility study, move into a pilot uh, of the hydromet and electrolysis, and we'll make an investment decision in 2017. Will we get to build it, or will the Chinese guys that get paid a PE of uh, 190 want us taking back half of production, I'm fairly certain they'll be just getting their checkbook out again. So that covers the lithium business. The other part of the business is the titanium business. Titanium is an unsexy mineral. Uh, it grows at GDP, it's 3%. The prices are, are right off. Um, none of the European or North American producers are making money. They're getting their throats cut by the Chinese haven't built any real new capacity in the West for 25 years. Um, so the upshot is that uh, we've got the world's second highest grade titanium resource um, and we don't have the benefit of having cheap hydro power, which the Canadians and Norwegians do where they smelt it. So we licensed a technology that was developed uh, out of McGill University in, uh, in Montreal. Um, we've applied our ore through it. The scoping study indicated that we could produce for half of the conventional cost of production as we scaled it up and made improvements through a mini uh, or continuous uh, mini pilot scale testing. Uh, we were able to drop that down to a quarter of conventional production. Uh, the pre-feasibility study was completed by uh, the Australian engineering company Sedgman in August 2015. We've recently secured rights to the technology and we will run a partner selection process uh, this year. Um, who are we going to deal with? Uh, well, we're prohibited from dealing with the Chinese. The North American and European titanium producers are needing a new technology to reset their cost base, otherwise they're just going out of business. Um, they should stop now because they're losing money, but the environmental rehabilitation liabilities are just huge. The commercialisation plan there is to complete pilot scale test work. Uh, we've recently rented uh, a laboratory and have a pilot plant set up in Montreal. Uh, we'll then move to a definitive feasibility study. Uh, don't be scared, we are not looking to develop this ourselves. We will develop it with a partner and revert back to a minority equity position. So our, our investment proposition um, is that we've got lots of cash. We are sharing them with our shareholders. Uh, there's potential for more cash and there's cash flow commencing uh, mid-year. We're then looking at a decision to increase production later in the year for 2017 and also to value add through converting into the lithium chemicals with partners. The titanium is a far bigger uh, project and the technology is relevant to, to more than just titanium. It's actually in commercial operation at the moment uh, treating uh, refractory copper gold concentrates. So the technology can be applied to a lot of minerals. But we've demonstrated the feasibility of the process, the economic viability uh, of developing it, and the last box that we need to tick is to bring into a partner to the titanium. 
So thank you very much for your attention and